So ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, really great that Keygate could arrange this FG Time conference directly following Mobile World Congress, and I've got some very interesting messages directly from that Congress to deliver. Uh, the photo you see on the screen here is directly from the Ericsson stand. This was called Music Connect. Uh, there were four members of the band, just two on our stand. Two were in another stand, and we were showing how low latency in 5G networks means that you can actually have remote bands. And it won't be long before it's remote bands with holographic forms as well. We had loads of great demonstrations. Uh, virtual reality with graphics rendered in the cloud. Uh, remote medical applications. Holographic meetings. And it proves beyond doubt that 5G is here and 5G is ready. But let's have a look at the 5G journey. We will start off with enhancements to LTE, but then we will move to non-standalone 5G, where LTE and 5G are going to work together, so-called dual connectivity. Later on, standalone 5G will come, will enhance the capacity, 5G will become mainstream, and use cases will be developed throughout this. Now, use cases, we've heard a lot about those today, and of course, at the top of the screen, there will be lots of industrial use cases for the future. Massive IoT, critical IoT, but at the bottom, we believe that the 5G story will start with enhanced mobile broadband and with fixed wireless access. So Ericsson has a consumer lab where we ask you know, people from all over the world, in this case, 22 countries, what do you want from 5G? Now, no surprise, top of the list there was gigabytes in seconds. Um, you also see real-time translation, tactile shopping. These are some of the 5G use cases that people experience with 5G are looking for. And this consumer lab study will be out in April, and I'll be very pleased to share that with you. But all this means that much higher bandwidth is needed, and thank goodness for 5G, and that it's going to lower the cost per bit delivered for service providers. For sure, 4G expansions, massive MIMO coming in will lower that cost per bit, but 5G with a new spectrum, spectral efficiency and lower power will actually give a 10 times less cost per gigabyte delivered. So end to end is all about 5G. It's not just about the radios. I'll talk more about the wireless in a moment, but the technical properties enabling 5G mean that there is new radio. This will be greater than three gigahertz. There will be massive MIMO for beamforming, and there will be increased energy efficiency by lean communications. The 5G core will need to change for network slicing, software function, uh, network function virtualization, and there will be separation of control and user planes. And the edge cloud will play an important part as low latency services will be offset to the edge of the network. And last week, Ericsson introduced their mobile edge compute node that is actually a node that goes into the base station. So the core and the radio access do really start to blur together. Ericsson has its 5G platform. This is where we put together the Ericsson radio system, the 5G access, the transport, the core communications, all orchestrated in the cloud. And let's have a little look at the wireless technologies behind 5G. Uh, we will have higher frequencies, shorter wavelength, greater throughput, wider carriers, much wider than LTE, advanced antenna technologies, Massive MIMO will, will be a big part of this. And last week, you'll have seen Ericsson announce the acquisition of Catrine antennas. And we will leverage the install base. And I'll come on to this in a moment, because this is critically important. The 5G works better when working with the existing frequency bands. And there will be network evolution into virtual RAN as well. Now, when you look at the different bands, the high bands and the low bands, for sure, lower, uh, the, the low bands will give much better coverage. 
the high bands will be much better capacity. And you want to put these two together so you get carrier aggregation between these mid bands and the low bands. Looking at the key enablers for 5G migration, uh, carrier aggregation is extremely important, so is spectrum sharing, and show is the dual mode 5G cloud core. Uh, one slide on each of these. Dual connectivity is where 5G will start. This is a non standalone. And this slide behind me shows the importance of having 4G and 5G together. The coverage will increase something like eight times. So 5G is really important to work with existing frequency bands. This stole the show at Mobile World Congress. It's Ericsson's spectrum sharing. In the past, with 2G, 3G, and 4G, you had to reserve different frequency bands. That could be a waste of resources if they were not being used. But 4G and 5G technology is very similar, so with some smart work in this radio scheduler, you can actually put 4G and 5G together on the same band. And that's why it's called spectrum sharing. You don't need to allocate for 4G or 5G. You can actually have both working on the same band, extremely efficient. And because there's 3 million Ericsson radios in the world that are able to be upgraded to 5G with this spectrum sharing on the existing bands. This is really a, a smooth and fast network migration to 5G. And once you've got that spectrum sharing and you've got 5G on the existing bands, you can start to do carrier aggregation between the mid bands and these existing lower bands. And the graph at the bottom right here shows that you can get something like 14 dB benefits in terms of coverage by having 5G carrier aggregations with the mid and low bands. Let's put this together and look at the deployment scenarios. And the baseline in, in green is the LTE today. Orange is the 5G. Orange will be introduced. The, L, the 5G will be introduced, and we'll have this dual connectivity when it's introduced as a second step. But then we'll add this spectrum sharing, and we will have 5G carrier aggregation between the mid and the low bands. That is the only way you're going to have full 5G coverage across the whole of Poland. More capacity will be added. Ultimately, you will have all bands connected with carrier aggregation. In Poland, it may be possible to introduce 5G through this spectrum sharing before spectrum for 5G is made available. And the dual mode core. Uh, it would be really inefficient if you had to have lots of core networks. So Ericsson has this dual mode core concept that will support 2G, 3G, 4G, but also 5G with this non-standalone mode and standalone mode. It will come cloud native, virtualized, containerized, supporting network slicing and service APIs. So. Mobile World Congress isn't just about what's happening now, it's about the future. And Ericsson is investing in research to show you what will come in the future. And this is an innovation that really impressed people at Mobile World Congress. And it's showing what will be the future of base stations, especially for indoor connectivity and compact outdoor activity as well. So this is a stripe, and I've got one here. If you can't see it, come and stop me afterwards and have a look. This is just a... Uh, a strip of tape with antennas on, circuitry on, and there'll be a chip on here to determine which frequency you'll be operating at. And we see this maybe in five years' time as being the indoor base station and base station for stadiums, etc. So look out for this. <laughs> Forgive me, one slide on Ericsson. Um, we have announced 14 named commercial 5G deals. Uh, this is more than any other vendor, and we believe this is around 50% of all named commercial deals in the world. And we have 2,000 engineers working in Krakow and Wuj, working on radio software, all technologies including 5G. These engineering experts, together with this 5G leadership, and this shared spectrum where you can turn on 5G, really make 5G easy. So Ericsson is ready for 5G. Are you Poland? Thank you.